So now we're going to look at how busy stores were. Um, again, I don't have specific footfall data. I don't have specific sales data. So I'm just going again on what people's interpretation was. And you can kind of split it into three different sections, uh, if you like. The first being stores were kind of as busy as they had been before, but they felt that sales conversions had increased. Why could this be? I put it down to the wholesalers, particularly having to work harder to be able to get the right kind of product in. Uh, if you look at JD Sports buying finish line, for instance, in the US, that's increased their importance as a wholesaler to Nike, which means that they can potentially get better product, um, exclusive product, maybe exclusive colorways uh, at the right times. And that's what's important for a wholesaler is pushing those sales whilst it's still full price. If you've got stuff left kicking out, uh, kicking around, you're obviously going to have to um, reduce it. And that's eating massively uh, into your margins. The next uh, section, if you like, they can drop into was people that felt stores were maybe slightly quieter, but had heard of evidence of online sales picking up. And, you know, online is a huge area and continues to be a huge area of growth for the, um, for, for not only the manufacturers, but also the wholesalers as well. If you think uh, Nike recently came out and said that they were going to stop supplying some of the smaller wholesalers uh, their product because they want to be trying to sell it themselves off their own platform. It's called DTC, direct to consumer. And if you imagine uh, Nike selling a product themselves, they haven't had to cut out the middleman so the margins are a lot better. Um, for um, for the manufacturers if they haven't had to uh, bring a wholesaler in. Also, you know, Boxing Day, you could be sitting there um, stuffed after your Christmas meal and you get a pop-up uh, on your phone and you decide, oh, I'm going to start browsing. You know, you didn't plan to go out to the shops and have a look for a pair of trainers, but I'm sure we've all done it. You end up going and buying a pair, um, buying a pair anyway. And I would say the last, um, the last sort of section, if you like, was that the sales period started it with Black Friday. So before it used to be that, you know, January sales started on the 1st of January, and then they sort of brought them forward to Boxing Day. Uh, and now they're even starting the week before Black Friday. I was in a JV Sports the Friday before Black Friday, and they already started their Black Friday sale. So I think what it's done is you've had a, you stretched that sales period out. Um, there was some good products and some great deals to be had early on, but you haven't had continued new products getting added in towards the end. So what you found is the good stuff was snapped up early uh, and then you've started to see things maybe, I don't know, maybe slow down a little bit as we've gone on through December and into January. I think this has dragged people's purchases forward. They've been able to buy Christmas presents cheaper um, as opposed to them maybe buying additional stuff uh, and driving additional additional sales. I personally think that this may well, this drag forward may well mean that Q1 of this year, and particularly in January and maybe in February, is going to be uh, a quieter period. But we'll have to wait and see for the uh, for the data from that. So the next category uh, I looked at was how promotional uh, and how much discounts there have been. So by promotion, I meant how much promoting they're having to do in price to be able to sell um, their shoes. And a number of people came back and said that they felt it was the most promotional period that, they, uh, that they'd known for the particular retail they were working for um, ever. Now, this can be stuff like just a blanket 20% off. It can be pop-ups on your, on your phone of additional, you know, check uh, additional discounts at checkout, whether it's free shipping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's clearly very, very promotional. And it harks back to what I said previously, when it's about having the right product and selling it um, at, the, um, at the right price. Now, sale items, you would have the usual feelers that uh, you may have seen my previous piece on that, but I think feelers have been in the sale actually even before the sales even started, then they continue to be stuck in the sales. So the disruptors too did well, but they're really just struggling to bring something else on. Or maybe Pumas, uh, there's been a few of, you know, they're, they're, they're doing some great, some great models that are coming out, but there's still some 
not so good ones sort of kicking around. But of the mainstream, and, I, and sorry, I don't mean to be rude when I talk about Fila and Puma because they are mainstream, but if I'm looking at Nike and Adidas, I would say that Adidas were probably the big name and I think they saw problems both end um, of the sort of the sneaker scale, if you like. Uh, so on the chunkier end, you had the Night Jogger. This struggled and they had big hopes on it. And I think it struggled because it's not quite dad shoe material. It's not a jogging shoe, really. I just don't feel like you have the support around you to, to, for it to be a proper running shoe. Uh, so it never really knew where to sit. Uh, in, as a category, as a subcategory within within trainers. Uh, another one uh, was the Oswego. That sold well. A number of the wholesalers at JD, as well as um, uh, Adidas, mentioned how good the Oswego sales had been. Uh, I think this is evidence that it's difficult for a company to work out exactly how many of these to produce to be able to, uh, to, to sort of... Uh, supply the amount of uh, demand that's going to be out there you're going to get some colorways that aren't as popular as others so you're going to get some that are sitting then uh, the nike um, uh, element 55 was mentioned as well as heavily discounted and again that's because it's been a very popular shoe some colorways are sold out straight away and others have not uh, have not been quite so popular but i do know of people that were getting that had multiple times in their stock room of these shoes than they would have done say something like an air force one and you would have seen a lot less of the air force ones maybe a few of the colorways that were being discounted but a triple black triple whites they're going to sell whatever the um whatever the weather the other uh, the other name that was mentioned and um, this was actually one that a shoe that i picked up in a grade school size um a week before the uh before black friday uh, and it's the Nike Air 270 React. Now in Q3, the Nike Air 270 was the number one selling shoe by revenue. So it's been a particularly popular shoe. And obviously what they've done here is they've teamed up the 270 um, heel uh, section with the soft React sole. They've sold well. Um, I expect some kind of 270 and possibly even the 270 React to feature um, when we get the details of what's sold particularly well in Q4 in terms of revenues. But I think this is another example of a shoe that was popular uh, and it's difficult to gauge demand uh, and how much to um, particularly um, to, to supply. So we saw plenty of these particularly some of the Laria colours. There was an OG colourway which had sort of white, green, yellow on it that uh, was still sort of kicking around the sales. So plenty of promotional activity. Uh, and it was, a, um, it was a, a, a combination of either sort of some of the less popular chunky shoes. And going back to Adidas, uh, you had the Gazelle was one that was discounted a lot as well. I think if you're looking at like the Special, it has a huge following, it has a cult following there. They do real premium uh, materials on those shoes. The Gazelle seems a bit of a notch down and they push the boundaries of some of their colours, which is great for some people. But I think, again, it's producing such high numbers that there were still plenty of those that were kicking around on the shelves in the sale, uh, in the sale aisles. So in conclusion, we've seen what a tricky balancing act is for these manufacturers to be able to not only keep bringing new fresh product through, but refreshing the classics as well. And we saw with that Air Force One, uh, the sales just continually, continually keep being very, very high, a very popular shoe. And, you know, it hasn't changed that much. Uh, they put a React sole in the latest um, uh, ones that are coming out. So they've gone really for comfort and they've tweaked a few bits and pieces here, maybe move, uh, change the size of the swoosh and stuff. But it's all about keeping that that initial canvas, if you like, um, that uh, that you base it off and then and then and then being able to tweak it and bring it up to date. Uh, then the next thing is about how you're how you're selling stuff. So is it online where your where your margins are a lot higher? Uh, in store, um, making sure you've got the right products in the right colorways at the right times. Uh, sometimes I question 
a colorway that might come out that might be an absolute banging summer colorway and they're bringing it out in November and people are going to be scared to to wear it or even sometimes in, in you're heading towards summer and you're getting some of these sort of browns or triple blacks coming out and stuff like that it's to me it doesn't necessarily make sense um but it's it's a it's a very very uh, important thing the relationships for the wholesalers particularly uh, as I mentioned with Foot Locker and JD um, with Nike and Adidas it's so important it's they're getting their exclusive colorways they're being able to get access to the right products and be able to create their own communities as well uh, with new um, sort of uh, new app based reward schemes uh, Foot Locker of, uh, of just in the process of completely revamping theirs and there's a much more of a community feel to it not just getting 10% off but early access to certain products um, and special colorways etc uh, etc et so that's one way that these wholesalers can continue to make a difference um, so hopefully you found this useful thank you very much indeed for everyone again that responded thanks for listening if you've got any questions please hit me up in the either by dm um, or you can just put some questions below and um, yeah I look forward to speaking to you soon thanks